I wonder if the Squire's made any progress with that Viagra issue thing. <laughs> Squire! Squire! Yes, my love? Have you made any headway with your rod problems? Um, yes, my lord. I have the required fee now. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I, I talk to your doctor, I guess. Um, so, does that mean that we can get this altar thing working then? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, very well. Well, okay. let's let's see it running then. Let's see. I just need to get it. And... Ah, it's quite. Oh my God! Zombies. Zombies? Zombies where? Zombies, zombies be behind us. It, oh, okay. Baby zombie on the main tent. They're gonna be a pain. Oh, oh, Whoa! Where is Infernal! Infernal! Infernal. Laser! Oh god! Invisible zombie! What is going on? Whoa! Watch Whoa! The cloaked zombie! Cloaked zombie! Oh jeez! I don't know where he's going to be now because he's kind of gonna be flying everywhere. What's happening? Polyvera, what's oh. going on? What's going on? There's something exploding. Back off! Oh, oh my god. Oh. Whoa. Race. Race? Oh no. Fuck. Polyvera? Get... Eyes. Someone oh, give me shit. eyes. What's There's going something on? something floating near me. There's... Ah! Oh god. Whoa, we got gas weapon around the field. Mercenary, do your business now. Take them down. Opening what? Fire. Something hit me. Whoa! What? Sniper what? on the wall. What Sniper on the wall. Archers to work. No, you can't have any of that back. Ah. I'm seeing what a floating sword on? somewhere. If somebody wants to get me some eyes on it. More gas. Ah. I ah. you some. Ah. Oh God. Ah. I'm, I'm stuck in the tent. I don't know why. I'm stuck in the tent. It's Everything is gone. Whoa! Oh. How much gas is there? Ah. Okay, fall back Don't to the guys. mine. Fall back to remember the mine. The time that you, remember the time that you ruined my home? I think that maybe it's time for a little bit of payback. Okay, I don't know if he's going to come down here, but try to try to grab some cover, and if he comes in, I'll corner him from behind, and you guys can flank him with archery. I think that's maybe enough. Playtime for today. Stay back, Wolf Boy. This is that silver sword you don't like. This is that Go. halberd that you got friendly with. Ah, uh, why don't we just have a little bit of a conversation? I think I'm done killing oh, and feasting on your friend's blood. Oh, it's so delicious. So, if you're all done following this little puppy dog who can't even protect his own camp from a simple incursion by two, perhaps you want to come see me. I can not only protect you, but I can grant you power everlasting. Think on it. If you, if you truly it want power. to find me, you will. Cursed power? Look who's talking. Bad little puppy dogs. Okay, folks, I think that's everyone. Let's let's head up and survey the damage. Quite probably he's rooted through a few things. He'd better not have touched my horse. Keep your eyes about you. I have no doubt that there's going to be some kind of sniper still around. I don't doubt he might have left some minions. Oh, thank God. Luna, you're okay. <sighs> what are you guys doing over here? It... What? Sol, uh, where have you been this whole time? Uh, doing human things down there. Is this a human thing too? It... Uh, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, alright. Hmm. Did anyone get a decent look at who his associate was? Nope. It was hard to see past the bullets. I was, I was like, shooting the sniper just now. Look, to be looking, wearing some sort of quantum armor. Quantum armor? It... That's pretty high quality Gary, stuff. where are you off to? Uh, no, 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 nowhere. It's Gary? Fine. Don't worry about me. Gary? Gary? Bye. G Gary? Gary? For real? Yellow belly, gizzardless. Well, friend. that's one more problem for the day. Everyone back in the walls. Close this gate before anything else gets in. Clearly, we need to substantially increase our footing. 
We're going to have to try and find some new contracts, I think. And if anyone happens to have any ideas as to how to improve our armaments, I suggest you investigate them forthwith. Mm. Meanwhile, survey the damage. I think we've had enough chatter for the day. Now, I've course, I've, I've gathered you all here to wonder and to exchange some ideas. Perhaps you know, of course, with our recent conflict that there are some apparent shortcomings to our capabilities. I was wondering if you might have some ideas in your own individual fields as to how to address them. Race, you first. Uh, I could do some flowery magic. So we is, can, that, like... is that related to your intriguing garb there? That belt of yours? Yep. It could help you with like to run faster, move faster and stuff. And I, I could see make... more, more mobility definitely seems like a good idea. We were caught quite unawares by their sniper on the ranks. Whom, by the way, we should probably try and seek out firstly to find out what their deal is, because that vampire certainly didn't have any friends the first time we met him. Um and also, he seems to have some interesting weaponry, which I think he might be convinced to share with us. Maybe you can sort of, like, go to where he was stationed and kind of sniff him out. Yes, I'll I'll investigate that purposefully myself. Uh, Zol, do I have to ask? Well, you know how in the medieval shows and stuff, on top of the wall, they pour hot oil onto invaders to make sure they couldn't climb up? Maybe we Are could do you that? about to suggest that we pour boiling and scalding milk on our enemies? Yeah. I'm going to veto that one. Oh, well, I guess I'll just make antidotes. That would be good. That that the the ubiquitous use of poison was the least useful was the least friendly part of that entire thing, especially the slowness. The poison was not so much a problem as the slowness. Folivera, he seemed to concentrate on you. Do you have any ideas why? Uh, I think it might have had something to do with my shielding. I've pecked up enough that I've got protection, <laughs> extra protection on my armor, um, so it's a bit hard to get through my defenses. It wouldn't- it'd be pretty easy, considering you've got two thaumaturges here, to um, add some shielding to everyone else's armor. I believe that would be the wisest thing. We definitely need to streamline our streamline our loadouts, make sure that everyone has similar capacities rather than being all around the place. Uh, Squire Fuzz, then, would you be interested in investigating that potion technology that was used? Uh, interestingly, my lord, I have been dabbling in witchery lately. Of course you have. Why does this not surprise me? And just, um... He seemed to be able to have some substantial effects in a sort of cloud form. There was a great deal of vapor passing through the camp under that attack. I'd very much like to see if we can't use that kind of style for ourselves. I will certainly look into it. Very well, and I'm sure that you noticed that the Squire and I took upon a more uh, lupine form in the course of the battle. Yeah, what, what's that about? Um, it's something of a long story, but the vampires seem to have a substantial bit, bit of difficulty dealing with our lycanthropic capabilities. Therefore, you may decline on this offer, but I believe it might be in our best interests for everyone here to be lycanthropic as well. We can help you hone those abilities should you choose to adapt them. And you, you are welcome to take some time to think about this offer. Oh, nice! I'll be adorable! Okay, everyone, so the episode ended up being a lot shorter than I was expecting it to be, considering all that happens in the course of it. Uh, so I thought I would come back and give a little bit of a tactical assessment of exactly how the attack on the mercenary camp was played, and how it actually represents a pretty good line of thinking in terms of uh, Dave's planning and strategy. So the first thing is, the exterior wall that we spent so long marking out and building was rendered completely useless, not because uh, Dave was able to break through it or anything, but simply by the fact that Dave is capable of flight. As a full level vampire, he is able to turn into a cloud of bats and fly completely over it. Now, 
We knew building the wall that it wasn't going to be imper in impermeable. I mean, it's made of logs, for the crying out loud. Um, we made it to pretty much cut down on the number of potential access routes to the area. High-level werewolves can leap right over it, and we knew that. We wanted ourselves to be able to get out, and we wanted to limit the number of people who could get in. So for people who are without flight, and flight is a premium in this mod pack, they will have to go through the... Uh, they'll, they'll either have to spend the time breaking through the wall, or they'll have to try and get through one of the two gateways. This was intentional, and Dave uh, chose one of the few methods that was able to actually bypass it. So that's his first option. Secondly, he attacked us in the absolute worst possible time to attack basically anyone. It was dark, he had night vision, he had an invisibility potion so no one could have seen him at the best of times, and it was raining. So all of these things combine create a lot of mess on your screen. If you think of like uh, a lot of your other Let's Players, uh, they choose not to film in snowy biomes because the snow uh, makes it really hard to see what's going on, especially after compression on a YouTube video, and consequently Dave had a lot of visual cover. There was a lot of mess on our screens and we couldn't make out even, even when he actually had an item in his hand. This had a slight downside that he wasn't able to wear any kind of armor, um, which was mitigated significantly by his uh, vampiric resistances and such. Uh, so if we had caught him, it would have been a big problem for him, but fortunately for him, it didn't turn out that way. So the next issue with the fact that we had an enemy that was moving around, was invisible, we couldn't see him at all, was that he had a lot of different places to go. As you can see, the mercenary camp is fairly open, it's got some pathways leading around it, but you can go to more or less anywhere from anywhere with relative ease and in a fairly short period of time, even without any kind of speed enhancement. This meant that as soon as one person was actually able to spot Dave for even the slightest of, uh, the, the tiniest of seconds, that he could easily be on the other side of the camp within a, within a few moments. Again, he chose a very good time to attack us when we're also just like getting on with our own stuff and we're not really like expecting anyone to attack because hey, we've had like one enemy and it was the same guy that attacked us the first time. So of course next we have to, we have to discuss the fact that Dave was attacking a much larger and much more uh, equipped force. So he chose the best way that he could to try and figure, to try and tackle our issues. He divided us by making sure we didn't know where he was, so we all had to look around at all times. He then used area denial as well as uh, area of effect attacks in the, in the form of his gas potions from Witchery, which not only applied poison free, thereby causing us a lot of damage, uh, they also applied slowness free, making it a lot harder for us to move around and limiting where we could be at any given time. He basically made us sitting ducks. After that, he focused his attacks on the more shielded, the more damage-resilient members like Folivera, who has a large amount of runic shielding, as discussed previously in this episode. So given all of that, you're probably wondering exactly how the mercenary camp could have worked better to try and resolve the issue. Well, as it happens, most of our group is fairly resilient. We are, uh, at least two out of us, able to turn into wolves, but of course Dave came prepared because he knew he was taking on werewolves. What we could have done would have been to retreat inside of the mines as we did in the course of that, and the reason we would have done that is to limit the access routes of our enemy, just like the wall, but more effective. By taking the fight underground, we would have limited the number of places that Dave could be, that he could move to, and especially the number of places that he could have fled to. So using that, we could focus our fire on singular entryways, or maybe one or two, but definitely not an entire 360 degree view around the sky. And we also could have potentially flanked him. This would have led to, undoubtedly to his downfall, because having an entire mercenary camp bearing down in your position, even with your splash gas potions, is going to be a lot of pain. Uh, however, this would rely heavily on being able to lure Dave into the mines, and it probably wouldn't have worked out too well in our favour, because he is, simply put, a bit too smart for that. We would kind of need to make sure that there was something down here that he would want to fight. And we did have a moment to actually launch on him, uh, but unfortunately he didn't come deep enough into the mines, and we don't have a ceiling method of any kind of doorway or gate here at the moment. We might look into that later. So, knowing all of that, Things that we could have done better were heavily discussed in the end of this episode, so I hope you've uh, paid close attention to the meeting with the mercenaries. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Night of Fangs, and I'll catch you all next time.
and I'm out. Okay. God damn, spider, get away. <laughs> Just like on my face right off your walls. Like, Francis, <laughs> return to death his by revenge. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, our secret weapon, Francis. <laughs> He's a single spider. <laughs>